Okay, so it's uh, Maker Business Monday. And on uh, Maker Business Monday, we often hit a lot of topics like why we do certain things. Mm. Uh, Adafruit's very statistics focused. And we release a monthly report. And we just did our report. And one of the um, pieces that we have on there is like page views. Um, do page views matter? Sort of. Product listings, which one is a top seller? Sort of. Um, internally, we do revenue numbers. Like, does revenue matter? Yes, but profitability. So as each group drills into the different pieces, um, we explain what they are. So um, Tony DeCola, who's one of our, our remote team members, asked a question about GitHub stats. And you and I were talking about it. And I'm like, wow, this is a really good um, story about why we do GitHub stats, uh, why we put things on GitHub, and why you decided to do that. So, Lady Anna, why do you Hi. put why do you put things on on GitHub at all? Well, that's a good question. We've started by not putting stuff on GitHub. So the history of how we would distribute, you know, we do open source hardware, of course, we must distribute files. So what we used to do is we would package them up as a zip, and we'd uh, attach the zip to a wiki or a web page that we wrote for each product, and it basically be became unsustainable. Like it's not, it's fine if you only have one product or two products, but once you get to the quantity that we have, you actually have to have a way of managing revisions and history, and you can't just have a zip file, um, and the zip file gets duplicated and cloned, and like who knows what version it is, and it's like, you start to rename things like Spoke Pub Final, Final 2016, March, Draft 8, you know? So what we started doing is um, when, um, we used Google Code and, and, and um, uh, code, uh, SourceForge, but that also wasn't so great. But when GitHub came out, we realized that this would be a really good way for us to manage the hundreds of open source hardware projects that we have, both PCB so files and code. The other thing is you use this for um, primarily PCBs. Like that's how we get started. So we put PCB files mm -hmm. in lots of code. And then, of course, um, what we're known for, um, the most Arduino libraries, useful Arduino libraries that a lot of people um, have, including the Arduino Manager now, it's pretty easy. So um, I think Adafruit was one of the first to put uh, PCB files up on, on GitHub, right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we, we moved to GitHub pretty quickly. I think, I mean, I think it's a little bit more than a third of our PCB files. Of our GitHub so repository. one third of GitHub is for Adafruit. Is with PCB. PCB. What's PCB. the other, how's it break down? I think it's a little bit more than a third, and I think a little bit more than, an, and then like a half is Arduino libraries, okay. or like another third, and then the last third is, you know, tutorial projects, or we have something we want, like we have a fritzing library. Yeah, so I was going to say one of the more the recent things that we've decided to do is we have a really easy way to publish PCB files to fritzing files, so people can use them in all straight. Or so iOS app, show. or Android apps, you know, like the, the stuff, you know, firmware. Um, like our Arduino, uh, the, the Adafruit board management, that's done in GitHub too. So what's neat is, um, yeah, also with, we used to distribute zips of Arduino libraries and then you know, we put them on GitHub and what's nice is now the, the Arduino IDE 1.6 and above actually does an automatic like grabbing, like it will automatically get the latest version and so people can manage their libraries from within the Arduino IDE using GitHub's release and this properties file. So I think it's, it's a very powerful tool for us to um, make sure that we have all of our files in one location. Because one thing I've learned is you can't have a link to a pro, you know a zip file or uh, code in two locations. You have to you have to have it in one place. You can't be going around editing it in multiple places. It'll get out of sync. And so what's what's nice about GitHub is it's like a, it's a repository. It's our core place where we keep code and PCB files. Yeah, and one of the things that we try and to make, files too. Yeah. Um, one of the things we try to make sure too is, you know, the team members and our developers, they can see that we're publishing code that mm -hmm. matters. A lot of people use it as in projects and more. It's not just junk code because we're trying to increase the in number. Yay! Like I don't think there's an award for most GitHub repos. We we don't even put. You know what's interesting? For small pieces of code, I actually will use gists or gists. I don't know how to say it. GIF, GIF. Who, you yeah, know. Who cares? Um, who cares? And what's nice is it's in GitHub, but you, and you can revise it, but then you can embed it into. Um, our learn guides that can do GIST embedding. And then, of course, for very small chunks of code, um, we'll either just put it as an example for the Arduino library we're talking about or just inline it. If it's like really just you know this much code, it's not worth having a repository for. But anything where we're like, okay, we're probably going to have to update it and people will fork it, adapt it, and change it, that's yeah. where we like to use GitHub. So one of the, I think, best examples that we have out there of like, what do we consider a success with the library? Well, like Neopixel Library, like we maintain, oh, yeah. we maintain it quite a bit. 
we see lots of forks, we see lots of stars. And, and then so, we merge the forks, you know, the people the pull requests and they merge yeah. them back in. You know, we started with just supporting Arduino 16 megahertz and we added 8 megahertz. And then uh, people added ESP266 and they added Teensy and they added um, like Atom. I mean, they, like every kind of other, you know, processor. This, this library is now kind of the place where people go to um, mm -hmm. add support for their processor or fork it. And that's, that's a nice thing. Like sometimes people say, hey, I want to add support for a chip and I'm like, hey, it's not within our purview, we can't even test it, some obscure processor, go and fork it and we'll just point people towards your fork. And I think that's a strength of GitHub, not a weakness. I actually like that there's a lot of forks. There's a lot of uh, possibilities out there. Yeah, and one of the things that we um, tell the, the team members too is like the, the code that we put up there matters. Um, this is stuff that uh, will get uh, issues posted, so you know we should make sure that this is what we mm -hmm. uh, feel is important. And uh, we often uh, get good ideas too from mm -hmm. the community about mm -hmm. some future future things we might do. Yeah, it's def it's definitely one of the places I'll see you know people help each other and then like we'll make suggestions and, and we'll do the best we can. I mean, for us, it's like it's for me, it's like the code that we put up is meant to make sure that the hardware when you get the hardware, you have some known working example code. So it's important for us to make sure that for everything we sell, we have something. So that you're not like from scratch, because I mean, doing it from scratch, writing a draft from scratch is a pain. Um, so if we sell an accelerometer, we have code that lets you basically get started with the accelerometer. It's not going to do everything that the data sheet can do, but it will get you pretty far. Yeah, and the other thing that I want to you know ruin future versions of bad Adafruit, like versions of Adafruit that would like be the terrible. Zara Adafruit. Yeah, the, okay. and and one of the things is as a company, if you work for an open source company, look at is the company, because you're not going to know everybody, but is the company publishing open source code on a fairly regular basis that seems to be useful? And that's one of the ways that we send that signal to not only our team, but the community, mm -hmm. that this is the pace that we like to, to do and we like to maintain and we like to have out there. We're putting up fritzing files, we're putting up PCB files, we're putting up... I put some PCB files up today. Yeah. <laughs> and I just did a, I just did a, um, a merge on uh, Todd's... Uh, uh, he did a pull request on adding anonymous authorization to the Adafruit MQTT tutorial because of GitHub and the, how easy it is to manage forks and merging and pull requests. I was able to test the whole thing in five minutes. Yeah, and so what it means is like, let's say you know we're we're two hundred years old and like we're finally going to retire from Adafruit. Whoever comes along next, uh, they can't just stop publishing code. It would be unusual. It mm -hmm. would be like, what's changed about the company? What's different now? And so I think it helps protect an open source company to have a frequent publishing uh, pace. Like we don't say to anyone, you know, blindly post code. Like, but it's, it's a race to as many repos. Um, we like to do yeah. code, code that matters, and we also like to make sure we're um, publishing code on a regular basis. We're not waiting forever. It's actually coming out. On, yeah, on, that's on a true. We, basis. we we definitely have beta code. Like, you know, I also fork libraries. Like we forked the Ethernet two library to add what I thought was uh, better support for Feather, because we added the Feather Ethernet chip, and I'm not gonna write a driver from scratch if there's already an open source driver that works quite well. So I ended up forking it, modifying it, so like we do that, like we're, we're part of this open source community. You know, we'll make changes to other people's code, send pull requests, vice versa. I think it's, um, I think it's a really neat community. You know, it's, GitHub's been a really good home for us. Um, but another nice thing about Git repositories is the history of every repository is stored within the repository, unlike SVN CVS, which we used to use. I used to use CVS a very long time ago. Yeah. And so if we ever had to, we could move to a different hosting system. We would lose issues, but that code history would still be there. Yeah, and the other thing that uh, I think that we do that's a little different is we, is we trust all the developers that work with Adafruit to, to decide you know, the, the, the code that they're putting up how it's commented, how they're mm -hmm. going to support it. I mean, we have guidelines and stuff. Um, and uh, the, the licensing, that's really important. Some people pick GPL, some yeah. people pick MIT, BSD. I mean, there's sometimes, of course, if we're basing it off of existing code, we will follow their license. But for the most part, it's um, we really we trust the team for the code that they write when it's appropriate for them to put it up. Sometimes a GIST, sometimes a GitHub repo, sometimes an example, sometimes just inline, whatever. Yeah. So I think right now, um, we have probably like 500. Yeah, about 500. Six, 500. Yeah. Close to 600. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm going through it and I'm, I'm updating a whole bunch of things that were unzips. I'm 
moving them yeah. from source forge old history yeah. onto GitHub, trying to clear it all out, make it. Yeah, make so it we're almost done. We're, our goal is by October to have a lot of the things that needed to be updated or whatever up, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it. So that's a little bit of a history of um, why GitHub. Yeah. Yeah. Why Why GitHub? Um, how we got here. Um, it's not just a number. Um, however, uh, it's important that we're doing more open source. Mm -hmm. And we're maintaining it, and we're doing a good job with it. And yeah, I think that's the that's the key with all this. It's also a good way to tell: Are we, you know, like new products is an important part of the company. Like I try to almost every week come out with a new product, and so if I'm coming on a new product, that should mean there should there's a new GitHub repository. So it's kind of a good way to keep pace with myself as well. It's like, hey, like yeah. if that number didn't go up, maybe I forgot to put the files up. Yeah. So okay. Well, that's it. We'll continue to do more of these. Um, it's kind of a continuation of uh, our Maker IO series with mm -hmm. funding and marketing. This one is stats. If uh, you're not measuring something, probably ain't going to get any better, and it's probably not going to be something someone cares about. And that's one of the things that we learned is um, if you're not celebrating your developers and the code they're publishing on GitHub that's open source, they might not want to do it one day. If yeah. no one's making a big deal about like, hey, thanks for doing that, it actually matters. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't put their code up. In fact, that's the norm. What's interesting, I, I just remembered this, is um, I, I thought it was fascinating that uh, a few years ago, definitely, like, you know, people, it was like, maker companies would be putting their code and PCB files up on GitHub or, or GitLab or whatever equivalent. Um, and what's interesting is now I'm actually starting to see chip companies do the same. So Realtek has a GitHub repository and they have, they have code for their chips there. Um, Bosch has been releasing Arduino libraries on GitHub. Okay. This is not usual. You know, like I think Nordic also has a repository. This is this is not usual. Chip companies are usually very controlling about their code. They don't release it. They wouldn't publish it. You'd have to have a click-through license and NDA. So it's actually very positive to see that, um, you know, we go around and we tell companies all the time, oh yeah, you know, we put our code on GitHub and they're like, they're kind of like, scared but then yeah. eventually I think they kind of catch on and they're like they think oh wait if part of the value of being in the maker community if what we have to contribute is code to github that's awesome because there's no click through there's no there's no NDA it's there it's public it's available for people to download and, and browse yeah and like one of the other things that we learned was uh, in addition to saying like good information is advertising good content is marketing um, really good code attracts a lot of developers. If mm -hmm. you want developers to work with you, especially ones that um, dig the open source vibe, put your code out there. Show that you uh, you maintain it. Show that you care about it. Show the licenses that are important to you. And it's a great way to recruit people, kind of um, behind the scenes of us, where you're not you're not placing a, a job ad. You're putting something out there, like, hey, this is what we're all about. And this is how we met a lot of people that work for us now. They they wanted to be part of an open source hardware and software company, and they looked at code and oh, this is pretty good stuff. I want to, I want to be part of that. So yeah. this is like our show and tell, very similar. Yeah, with code. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where they show projects and like we meet a lot of people that um, we end up working with. Yeah, I see, I see people all the time. They make their projects or their products or the yeah. Kickstarter, and they're like, I can like, oh yeah, you use this library, and that library, and it's like, great, this worked out. Yeah, I would, I would, I like having you know the definitive NeoPixel or definitive. Uh, ILI 9341 repository. Um, that's kind of cool. That means that we're we're contributing a good amount. We're contributing code that people want to use. Yeah, I think the thing that we decided is let's make sure it's always quality and it's used. And it is. Um, sometimes it's used a, a lot. And yeah. like businesses rely on our mm -hmm. um, libraries. There's a lot of Kickstarters, crowdfunded businesses that use like NeoPixel Library, for instance. And that's one of the things that we, we put on our blog. Like here's another example of NeoPixel. The, the community does shout outs. They're like, oh, this is, this is, even if they don't buy something from us, they'll say this was all possible because of the, the NeoPixel Library. Mm -hmm. That's a good, that, that's like kind of the. Oh, I see a uh, lot. So one of the stats that, that you okay. have over there is, um, we'll just do this real quick. So what's the numbers on that one? That was just uh, GitHubStats.com. It's the. Yeah. Oh, this one? Okay, yeah. so this is the NeoPixel library. I don't know how accurate it is, but this is one of the things that we look at. So it says we have 880 stars. So that's yeah. kind of cool. People start, they like it. Yeah. Um, and then 415 forks. So it doesn't mean that actually everyone's contributed code. Like some people fork the code just so that they have their own copy. Yeah. I'd say probably about 100 of those have a code change. You can actually look at the graph later. 
uh, 32 issues, and it looks like, you know, it shows you the polls and stuff. Um, a lot of it is, you know, different chip sets and stuff. People are like, oh, I want to add support to, like, the chip or the onion pie or the banana cream pie or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, this is one of our, I think, one of our most popular GitHub repos. Yeah. So this is something we look on. So uh, look, look at uh, each one. So, you know, behind the, the numbers, uh, besides it just being... I think it's a pretty impressive number for a company. Um, these are the things that we consider and more. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you go to adafruit.com uh, slash about, you can see this stat amongst others. And uh, this so is- So check out our GitHub, github.com slash adafruit. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. All, all is there. Okay. We'll see how this test worked out. We have this very interesting little portable setup. Uh, I'll do uh, a quick director's cut. So this okay. is the, the Mevo uh, on my iPhone. I'm controlling what, how the camera pans over so it can go to Lady Ada, and then it can zip over to me, and then it can zip back to Lady Ada, and then we can go to widescreen. And then uh, we discovered something interesting. Um, the iPhone, when you use an official iPhone case, can charge and have a data thing going on. So this is a uh, microphone um, that normally plugs into the back of an iPhone, and it can also work when you get an extender cable, and I also have some real-time Listening, um, an iPad Pro does not seem to work, um, as we found out, because yeah, it's fun. a very different device. Yeah. And uh, this, we're 16 minutes in, and it's working. And Ooh. so, yeah. The cat's, so, cat's freaking out. The cat's freaking out. And I've never moved. <laughs> yeah, I've never moved this device around, but I'm gonna still try. I'm gonna see what happens. So as you can see. Whoa. Yeah. Here's the microphone. Two mics, so directional, yeah. left and right. And then here is the. The controlling device and that's it that's the entire sub this is a neck sign that's not included um, <laughs> and these are some cool yeah LED lights yeah those are some lights um, but you know that's that's uh, I have a question does that the, the move does it auto focus uh, I guess we'll find out yeah because <laughs> I was like there's no focusing yeah so uh, so that's it we'll do we'll continue to do these um, when all this works out um, we're doing some very experimental things with cameras and yeah. streaming and more. So uh, we'll see We'll see how this goes. So thank you for tuning in. And Tony DeCola, thank you for the excellent question. It gives us an opportunity to show uh, and share uh, what matters with some of the stats that we're, we're really mm -hmm. proud of. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, fork. <laughs> Go forth and fork. Go I forth and fork. May the fork be with yeah. you. <laughs>